Hi, I'm Dr. Sam, and welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm joined by our newest family member at the clinic, Dr. Rakesh. Hey, how are you? Hi, Sam. So, Dr. Rakesh and I have known each other for over a decade. Yeah, it was. We met a long time ago, working up in Norwich, and have stayed good friends, and I've watched his career blossom. He's now a leading dermatologist with an interest in procedural practice. And yeah, I'm really glad to have you on the team. So we're going to talk about lasers today because you guys had so many questions about lasers and where it sits in our practice at the clinic. So I thought I would let you tell them a bit about what you think lasers are best for when it comes to skin problems. Okay, well you're right Sam, lasers are very complicated. People have many misunderstandings about what they are, what they can do for you. And so I think this is really good. Um, discussing what we can offer when it comes to lasers. So I like to think of lasers falling into four main categories in how they can help you. The first one is probably the most common and that can help with broken veins. Most people, especially if they have fair skin, will have broken veins either on the cheeks mm. and a lot of people complain of broken veins, as you know, I have around some. the nose. Yeah, right by the nose. <laughs> and there are certain lasers that target broken veins very specifically, and they can be very, very effective for those broken veins. Possibly less so when you have that diffuse redness, but they can still help. Okay. So that is the commonest reason that you might consider treating someone with a laser as opposed to creams. Yeah, so someone with rosacea, with that Perfect. background redness, we've treated the acne part mm -hmm. of it, the, the blemishes and the bumpiness. And now you want to make everything more even toned. Absolutely. Okay, great. What else can you do? So the second commonest indication would be if you have facial pigmentation. And so that will involve many things such as sunspots, uh, lesions called separate keratoses, basically brown pigmentation. Um, of course, it's always important if you have any brown pigmentation on your face that is of more than one colour to be seen by a specialist to make sure that it isn't. It is just a sunspot and nothing else. I think that's so important. I think pigmentation is kind of often put into one pot, if you yeah. will. And I think this is really where you need to be careful, guys, and where you need to seek the right help because diagnosis comes before Absolutely. treatment. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Well, Once you have the diagnosis, then pigmentation can be treated very effectively with laser treatment. But there are also many other treatments that can address pigmentation. Finding the right one for you. Uh, is a very individual thing, but lasers is certainly one of those things that can be considered. Then the third category will be things that come under the umbrella of laser resurfacing. So that is for things like acne scarring, um, rough texture, um, scars. Those are the commonest sorts of things you might consider resurfacing the procedure. Also, resurfacing is often used for skin tightening, but there are also other lasers we can consider for that too. These can be very effective indeed, if short of a facelift, if done correctly, and by the right person, and getting very good advice as to if you are the right person for these sorts of resurfaced procedures is again vitally important. It's all about assessing the skin fully. Um, and then finally, there are lasers that are specifically designed for skin tightening. Now these are less invasive than skin resurfacing but can still help rejuvenate the skin, tighten the collagen and also have some effect on some red marks and some pigmentation too. So laser treatment kind of falls into those broad spectrums but again every person is an individual and every person needs I think tailored advice as to what laser treatments is suitable for them. Yeah, I think that's the really key take-home message I, I'm here, is personalisation and seeing someone who's got the full set of tools. So often you find clinics where there's only one or two devices and they haven't got the capacity to exactly. actually treat all of those issues completely. Mm, absolutely. So Rakesh, you're a laser guy. Tell me, what can you do with your lasers I can't do with my creams? That is a great question, Sam. <laughs> Well, there is a lot of uh, misconception about what lasers can and can't do, especially when it comes to skincare. Okay. And so it's very important if you're looking for laser treatment to find someone that knows their lasers. As you said, I am a laser man. So with lasers, they can do probably one of four main things. One, they can help with pigmenta uh, red pigmentation. Yeah. That's broken veins on the face, particularly these really stubborn veins and vessels around the nose. They can help with sunspots. 
and these little warty things that you can get on the face called seborrheic keratoses. Yeah. Again, for those sorts of things, it's vitally important, as you know, Sam, to make sure that the diagnosis is correct when it comes to sunspots, because not everything brown on the face is a sunspot. 100%. That's so important, guys. Listen. <laughs> then, what else do you do? thirdly, skin resurfacing. Yeah. So what is that? That is like fine wrinkles, uh, skin sagging, it's tightening collagen up, but also things like scars can be very... Uh, can be optimally treated with laser resurfacing. And finally, skin tightening, which is a little less invasive than skin resurfacing, but can have many similar um, features and improvements, but just less invasive. And so I think the key with laser treatments is there's lots of lasers out there. Many of them overlap in what they can do, and it's finding someone that can tailor the laser treatments with a package of creams or other types of therapies to actually do what you want to do with your skin. And I think it's vitally important. There is not a one size fits all. Every person needs a, their own plan. Great advice. What are the risks and safety considerations when you're thinking about lasers? Okay, good question. Um, there are lots of different types of lasers and all of them have considerations for when is the optimal time to use mm. a laser. What I would say is that the main ones are, are People are on medication, either tablets or creams. Some of those can make your skin more sensitive to some of the side effects of lasers. And mm -hmm. there are things like um, oral isotretinoin, for instance. There is so we're accutane for acne. That's yeah. right. And mm -hmm. um, there are some medication that make you more light sensitive. They sometimes can be a problem. You need to stop them. And um, topical, so cream isotretinoin, like tretinoin, and some of the retinoids can also make your skin more sensitive. It's usually good practice to stop those shortly before any laser treatment. I think, again, coming back to who does your laser treatment, that's why it's best to have a dermatologist do laser treatments because they understand so. these medications and what the, the mm -hmm. safety considerations are. They can treat with confidence. Yeah. And another big consideration is the sun. Yeah. When you have had laser treatment, your skin is more sensitive almost with all of the lasers. And so having particular consideration to how you will interact with the sun is very important. You can have a great laser treatment, but it's of no use if you then go uh, exposed to the sun and then you have a great deal of pigmentation afterwards. So often many laser treatments are better done in the winter months or not around vacations. Yeah, cool. It's all sounding very exciting enough. I need to book myself in for some immediately. So tell me, do you have a pet laser? What's your oh, favourite? <laughs> are you allowed to play your favourites? <laughs> Oh, you must have. That's a tough one. You're a kit guy. All lasers, I have to say, all lasers are great when they're done on the right person for the right indication. Now, if I had okay. to choose, I would probably say the pulse dye laser. Now, that's the laser that's used for redness. And now you're going to ask me, why have you chosen that laser? <laughs> well, the reason why is that I have seen huge transformations in people's okay. both appearance and also confidence by just taking out all of the thread veins from their face. Often it's a relatively mild change in their face, but the confidence it can give someone is turning someone from night to day. Love that. Okay, pulse dye laser. When can I have some? Wow. <laughs> I know I'm a bit red. Um, cool. Well, I think that was really helpful. Okay. Um, I think key messages, guys, Lasers can be highly effective, but they can cause problems in the wrong hands. So choose your practitioner wisely. And yeah, they can really boost your self-esteem and confidence and deliver that growing up glow that we look for. Absolutely. There you have it. Everything you wanted to know about lasers and some. Thanks, Rakesh. You're welcome. Bye for now.